Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Robin Ford. I'm the Deputy Commissioner here at the Department of Health, and I want to welcome you on behalf of Commissioner, Acting Commissioner Baston. Unfortunately, she is delayed, so we wanted to get started because we know your time is valuable, and we want to hear from all of you that are attending. So thank you so much again for joining us to share your budget requests and to provide feedback on what you think the New Jersey Department of Health should prioritize the upcoming budget. We appreciate all of the work that you do, and by working together, our effort to save lives. We value your thoughts and input in helping to shape our priorities in the next budget. Thank you again for all you're doing to help the Department of Health and for the health and well being of New Jersey residents. I'm now going to ask our um, legislative director. Rosie, to give us some information on the details for tonight's presentation. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining the New Jersey Department of Health for our FY 2025 budget listening session. Please note that we are recording this session. This is the first of two sessions. The second will be held tomorrow. If you sign up to provide verbal testimony for this session, your name will be called. At that time, please unmute your microphone and provide your testimony. Remarks are limited to five minutes. Once you reach the five minute mark, you will be muted. If you have not signed up to speak and wish to share testimony, please note that at the end, conclusion of registered speakers, there will be a time for you to share testimony. We thank you all for your participation today. Now we will begin. Um, tonight we have one registered speaker, uh, Chris Merkel. Uh, Chris, whenever you're ready, um, please feel free to begin your remarks. Good evening. I think there are a few folks who are in the waiting room. Thank you for uh, your patience tonight. Um, I will just go over the logistics again one more time if you just joined. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for our FY 2025 budget listing session. Please note that we are recording this session. This is the first of two sessions. If you have signed up to provide verbal testimony for this session, your name will be called at that time, please unmute your microphone and provide your testimony. Remarks are limited to five minutes. Once you reach the five minute mark, you will be muted. If you have not signed up to speak and wish to share testimony, please note that at the conclusion of registered speakers, there will be a time for you to share your testimony. We thank you all for your participation today. Um, and Acting Commissioner Bassett is now joining us. Um, would you like to share anything? Just want to thank everybody so much for taking time today to share your testimony, just like Rosie just said. Um, I'm very excited to hear from you. What you tell us, your experience on the ground is very important as we go into budget season. So thank you again. Thank you. We will now begin. We have one registered speaker for this evening, and after that, we will open it up to anyone else who would like to provide remarks. Um, the, there is one individual in our waiting room, so we please let them in. Um, Mr. Christopher Merkel, could you please provide your testimony? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Um, my name is Christopher Merkel, and I'm the health officer with 25 years of public health experience. I'm the current health officer for the Monmouth County Health Department. I'm also president of the New Jersey Association of County and City Health Officials. Members of our association represent all New Jersey's local health departments, and work collaboratively to prevent disease and provide essential public health services to New Jersey's approximately 9 million residents. I'm here this afternoon to speak on behalf of our local health department members and to discuss the need for sustained funding that will preserve and grow an already compromised and depleted public health workforce. As we come out of the COVID pandemic, there are many public health issues that have arisen. Mental and behavioral health cases have skyrocketed, skyrocketed STD cases, specifically syphilis and congenital syphilis cases, continue to increase. TB cases, including drug-resistant cases, are on the rise. Children are behind on their scheduled immunizations. Children are still lead burden, and diseases like cancer and heart disease are rising due to lower screening rates in the last few years. 
local health departments are forced to face all this with a depleted and exhausted workforce, ravaged by the pandemic and struggling to hire and retain a qualified workforce the citizens of New Jersey have come to expect and deserve. While efforts have been made to help defray the municipal county state costs of pandemic response, this is certainly not enough. Current grant funds are exceedingly prescriptive and short term and do not provide for the acquisition and maintenance of the material and human resources that are critically necessary to support the daily operations that promote and protect the health of our communities. Crisis grant funds that sustain local health departments through the pandemic are ending leaving health departments with the difficult choice of funding through municipal county budgets or lay staff off at a time where the public health workforce is needed more than ever. <clears throat> the announcement that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention budget will be slashed by 10%, which equates to approximately $1.5 billion, will di directly affect local health departments and is a crushing blow to local programs citizens depend on. <clears throat> Despite the association's best, best efforts, the state continues to ignore the pleas of local health officials and has not supported local health departments financially through the direct funding in the state budget. There were little to no funds earmarked in last year's state budget for local health departments. Instead, local health officials are left with local taxpayer funding and a patchwork of crisis funding grants, which again are a short term not sustainable nor flexible. Municipal budgets are stretched thin. Local health department budget budgets are usually the first to be cut to save money. In addition, the federal public health <clears throat> infrastructure grant known as the Fed grant earmarked 40% to be allocated for local health departments. The New Jersey Department of Health has decided to hire state level staff and work on state priorities instead of collaborating with local health departments on their needs at the local level. Local health departments will see no direct funding from the FIG grant. We ask the New Jersey Department of Health to support the association's efforts in obtaining long-term, flexible, and sustainable funding. The continual underfunding of local health departments in New Jersey is unacceptable and puts our residents at risk. We respectfully request that New Jersey's local health departments be viewed and funded as full partners as local governmental public health agencies, and not just at times of crisis and loss. The time to act is now. Please support local health departments to achieve funding to rebuild our state's local public health infrastructure. Choosing not to support our members financially through the state budget will have devastating consequences for all New Jersey residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merkel. Um, if you have not registered to speak, but wish to provide testimony regarding uh, next year's budget, please let us know in the chat or by raising your hand in the Zoom at this time. Caldwell, would you like to provide testimony regarding the budget at this time? Uh, yes, um, guessing you can hear me. I'm Sheila Caldwell, a resident in uh, New Jersey and also a school nurse in Monmouth County. My concern is the Pediatric Asthma Coalition that went away in approximately 2015 that had been funded um, by way of the NJDOH as well as um, partnership with um, the American Lung Association and a few other organizations. This yeah. went away and this at this point in time has left school nurses and even those families um, in need of um, resources and information related to asthma. Uh, it was noted in your SHAD report that this was still an initiative that the state was working on and that the organization was still in existence even until recent times. And it has actually not been in existence for such a long time. We know asthma is the most cr highly chronic condition of children, um, especially in school settings. And 
their absentee rates and otherwise become a factor. In addition, um, there are new guidance that has just recently come out within the past year, two years, well, the 2020 asthma guide, guidelines and things that are gonna be going into effect. And it would behoove uh, the state to re-implement these opportunities for school nurses and even facilities managers to have um, the, the, the organization, the coalition put back in place in order to assist children and families in the state, uh, especially as it relates to, as I say, children and episodes in school, as well as being absent, because that's one of the highest reasons for a term from chronic conditions that children are absent from school. So um, I, I would hope that um, there's consideration to look back into this and put some funding back into um, restarting the Pediatric Asthma Coalition of New Jersey um, for the children and families. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Caldwell. Would any other uh, folks like to share testimony on the budget? All right, hearing none at this time, that concludes our hearing. Thank you all so much for your participation tonight. Thank you for your time and participation and thank you for your testimonies.